Sancho Monte. And finally, this is the team that we have. 
Uh, we've got a great team. We've built an awesome product all weekend long. Uh, and we realized that we're building a business with a social sustainable mission. And in order to do that, we have to first build a sustainable business. That's small potatoes. All right, let's welcome Activity Pass. All right. Everybody put the judges stand up real quick. Stand up real quick, clock All right, sit down. I just bet my team that I'd get the entire prize if I got a standing ovation tonight. I already have that. <laughs> so what I've got is I've got Activity Pass. What Activity Pass is, is, is an idea. I'm an idea guy, and I've got my other co-founders with me. But what I, the idea and the problem that I have is I've got four kids. And I'm a dad, and I'm passionate about those kids. And my kids are passionate about their activities. What activities are they involved in? They're in tech, involved in wrestling, basketball, uh, rugby, choir, show choir, tennis. There were 13 different activities that my kids were involved in last year. The majority of them came from one place. That one source was a school. But I still had 13 ways of communication that were flowing to me. So what we've done is we've put together an the calendar management system to help solve that problem. Missed events. Because there's 13 of those events, and I work 50 plus hours a week, I miss a few events. I feel bad about that. I want to be able to participate in my kids' lives. Hey, what a better way than to go out and to where there's a video archive and I can sit next to my young lady and I can say, hey, you did a great job at that basketball game last night. Good job. Then you have the privacy issue. The privacy issue, there are places that we can share right now. There are places that you can't do that. But are they secure? Are there lurkers that are out there? Are there people, are you scared about that? We've addressed how to make sure that this is secure as well. So that's the problem. The market potential, the market potential is huge. 16,500,000 high school students. Five billion spent on youth sports back in 2004. I would venture to say it's a little bit more by now. Of that 16,000, if you just go out for one play, which is a yearbook, Jostens, the company that owns Jostens, who makes the yearbooks, they charge $50 a yearbook. That parent company makes $1.6 billion a year. 30% of that school, of those people that participate, of those students that may participate in buying a yearbook, that's a quarter of a billion dollars worth of revenue. How do we tap into that? Volunteer spot, or what, how, how we see it, is activity pass is like volunteer spot, shutterfly, and huddle all shipped together to create a unique client experience for that end user. We've done some primary research, and I've, I've shown you, you've got that on your handout. But 78% of parents that we, that we did the primary research actually share online. But of that, only 33% said they actually resonate with the community. So what's our model? What's it look like? How do we get there? The big fish is the school. We go out to the school. We get all those fish by giving a student activity management system to the school. There's one source to communicate back with the teach from, from the school to the parents. We give that to them. Then we sell premiums and we're able to have premium memberships and that's how we garner, get our, our revenue out of it. The features that we have is also giving back to the schools. If I can have a social cause out of this and I can give 10 to 20% back to the school, they're going to be engaged and they're going to help me promote this item. It's user friendly, it's also very scalable. The potential verticals that we're going to go out in the future, e-commerce, other clubs and activities, it's not limited just to schools, and we can develop a curriculum in the school to help them out. So let's talk tech. <clears throat> obviously you've got to have a website, right? So obviously homepage, all the marketing information describes the problem and solution of what it is we're trying to, uh, to solve. And that's great, but eventually somebody's got to log in, and it happens. So this is the free product, this is the calendaring tool. So here you see up at the top right a list of all the activities for my kids that I follow. This could be other relatives as well, it doesn't just my kids, we, uh, nieces and nephews. And this is all the calendar information that's flowing into me in one place. So you see uh, by week, then down by month. And then let's take a look at some of the premium features. Do notice real quick, we left some spots that never add for the free product, we can always have an advertising and special revenue stream. But once that user does log in as a premium user, magic. 
still have the calendar, but now you have all that rich information. All of the photos and videos taken by not only me and my, but other friends and families in the school that I follow through this platform, the photos, the videos, maybe they captured an image that I missed because I wasn't there or I got the back of that guy's head. Um, and that's the technology. So we did a lot of canvassing over the weekend, went out, met a lot of great people, got some great information, but one of these really stood out and we thought we should share it with you right now. I would love to have an activity class. I think that was a great idea. There have been many times that I've just had this activity that I've worked in. Um, all of all things is called overall. Uh, it is recycled, even though it's a lot of programs. It would be awesome to have something like this. My parents were there having a couple of people. Um, the grandma lives 22 hours away in Arizona, so this would be an awesome, I think, awesome idea. I think this would be um, a great challenge. All right, that's time. Thank you. My story is a lot like all of you. You go to the gym in January, right after New Year's resolution. You buy a membership, you walk through the door, you spend 75 bucks. You go for a week, you never go again. Why is that? Well, the gyms and equipment are overwhelming. You either don't know how to use them, or you think you look like a fool using them, so you don't want to do it if you're doing it incorrectly. Another is boredom. If people are only know how to use three machines and they're doing it every day, people, Americans like switching things. People in general like switching things up. They don't like doing the same thing over and over. So if you're doing the same exercises, you're going to get burnt out pretty quick. And third, <laughs> you don't want to use dollars an hour for a personal training. That's where scramble fit comes in. My name is Brady, and I'm going to be talking about a mobile app. A mobile app that lets you pick your location, pick your type of trainer, give you a list of random exercises, and it'll give you video feed to do those exercises if you've never done them before. Some benefits is you don't need this for $60 an hour. It's a little bit more friendly, and it is random exercises, so you don't know what you're going to do from day to day other than it's going to be an arm workout or a leg workout. And we've got a demo of a wireframe.
five seconds. Okay, so what's our competitive? We don't have anyone that randomizes the exercise workout right now. All we have is substitutes. So that would give us a competitive edge on Nike and fitness and calendar and so forth. A revenue stream, we would sell subscription and or purchase for individuals. And then we would offer a sub annual subscription for the corporate account. We're asking for $20,000 for 30% equity. That would start with kick-up costs and the eight to ten thousand dollars it would cost for the development and design of that. And in phase two, we would like to integrate the health metrics and uh, or like the logging of your exercise and your reps and weight and so forth. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marcus Ross. This is Kara Hancock. This is Chapman. We are doing water bear things. Uh, Kara here is putting up some illustrations from our game that we came up with this weekend. Uh, she did all these herself, all this weekend, I promise. <laughs> Alright, well here's the problem we're trying to address. Amateur game designers make truly terrible games. And here you can see an example. As admitted by an actual convict, certain time. <laughs> it's a terrible game. Alright, now, it's not that bad, except that they double down once they've made a bad game. Slide, please. They pitch their poor design to a publisher, and it ruins their credibility. Because who wants to ever talk again to the guy who gave you serving time? Or worse, they'll self-publish the game. And self-publishing is fine. You go to a manufacturer and you say, make me 5,000 copies of my game. Four dollars each, and $20,000 worth of serving time. They get space in the garage. So, the result, I mean, you just you don't do play testing. You won't know your game sucks. All right, so 90% of these, let me get up. Next slide, please. Uh, the market we're going after is this style of game. This is the European designer style. This is very popular out of Germany, and it's starting to make its way here. These are two of my favorite games that uh, sell quite well here in America. Uh, these games emphasize player interaction, trading. They de-emphasize violence. They're very fun games to play. Next slide. They're hard to do. This one, you may have played already. This is the Settlers of Catan. It's very, very popular. It won this award, the Spiel des Jahres. It's given out in Essen, Germany at a, at a uh, games conference. It's a very large conference. 150,000 people attend every year. Next one's next month. Uh, if your game is not in for that prize, you will sell 10,000 copies. If you at 30 to $40 a piece. So how do we get there? We're going to try playtesting. This is our game, uh, played right here at Star Weekend. And we got these guys, they printed out our game. Uh, on cardstock, we did it at Kinko's, 10 bucks. And it looks really good. And we got people to play test it and give us feedback. And that, that helps us. That'll improve our game. And we think this is a great idea. And not only do we think it's a great idea, next slide. She thinks it's a great idea. She won the Spiel des Jahres for this game. And that's how she started. So our idea, next slide, <laughs> is to be the place game designers can get objective play test reviews of their game while it's still in development. And gamers can try out the newest game concepts quick and cheap because if you buy a forty dollar game and it sucks, you just feel bad. So our competition in this area is not great. Board game geek has forms, and board game geek does everything. The problem is board game geek does everything. So next slide, everything. This is their whole game. I show you now. I know what I'm looking for. I can't find it. Next slide. Uh, gaming and hobby shops, they let you bring in your games and play test them. They'll do it once a month, maybe, if you find them. And you maybe get five or ten opinions. You do this forever, you might get a few opinions, it'll help. But there's just, it's hard to do this. Go to conventions, that'll cost you $4,000 or so to pack up, rent a table, beg people to come play your game, you get the same deal. Your families and friends are useless. They, they will tell you they love it and it's wonderful, and wait till you leave and just throw it away. So, our deal model is what Cards Against Humanity does. This is a very popular game. Uh, they license their game Creative Commons. On their very own website, they offer this game free to print. Uh, and they also offer free remix. If you go to their website, download this game, and you like it, you can change it up a little bit. You can't sell it. They have the right to sell their game. And here, they're selling it by just leaving things on the table. Just honor system. Like, please pay us. I like them. So our approach would be as appraisers will provide designers games to download the PDFs on our site for free under Creative Commons license. We give gamers a place that they can uh, discover all these new games and we want to do some marketing and some building excitement. We'll let them get uh, exclusives, games go to print. And 
we're going to start playing games like this one. Uh, and we're going to do, we want to take this to publish at some point. If you get there, if you build the contact that way, then you have that. Talk to these people. Here's uh, the page we're kind of thinking about this is what our game looks like. Uh, we'll be letting you play this if you like. We have trophies. And uh, that's our presentation. Thank you. For <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Dan. Uh, my partner, Joe uh, Sperano, and I this weekend worked on Let's Brew. Uh, before I get into what it does, a little bit of background. I, four years ago, I decided to start brewing because, really, I love beer. Uh, and when we asked people who were interested in home brewing why they wanted to do it, they said they love beer too. And they also said it sounded like a fun thing to do. It was sound like a great learning process. Uh, it's a good chance to be creative and try new flavors and styles of beer. And mostly they, they really wanted to do it for a sense of accomplishment to share it with their friends. But it's not an easy process to get into this home brewing. Uh, what, what, it's, what a typical home brewing starter kit looks like is something like this. A little bit scary, right? Uh, the most common response we got on our survey to why people hadn't tried home brewing yet was a lack of understanding the equipment and processes involved, uh, the amount of space they needed to take up. I mean, obviously this kind of stuff is going to really take up a lot of space if you have a place to put it in. And the money involved, these kits range from like $100 to $400. Uh, and that's, that's not an insignificant investment for something that you're just kind of thinking about doing and you might want to do. Uh, and then when I looked into the software when I was getting started, this was the best solution out there. This was the industry standard, Beersmith 1.4. Leave it to computer engineers to take the joy out of brewing. <laughs> <laughs> they really solved the science, the, the problem of figuring out the science of brewing, but, but like I said, there's really none of the creative and artistic aspects of it. And so in our opinion, these uh, are hardly the idea of tools to, to get people involved in the home brewing process. So that's why we created Let's Brew. Let's Brew, quite simply, is turning beer fans into brewers. Uh, it's a mobile web app. It's designed to welcome people into the brewing process and create a community of home brewers uh, who appreciate the art and the craft that goes into home brewing. So how does it work? Well, of course, first we create an account and sign in to Let's Brew. The next thing that happens is we can help immediately determine uh, the level of experience this person has with brewing. Do they need to understand what the four ingredients that go into beer? Uh, they need to know how to make beer, so if I'm, you know, kind of familiar that water green hops go in there, I can like, how do I make beer? Uh, I get a series of videos here that uh, detail the six stages of, of creating beer, and it also kind of familiarizes the people with the brewing vocabulary. Really. These kind of resources are built in throughout the app to help uh, understand the different ingredients and, uh, and provide demonstrations for how to, how to, how to brew. Um, so when the user feels sufficiently educated, they can use this equipment checklist to find out what they need, what they may already have around the kitchen, so they don't need to buy a new kit in a larger kit, and uh, what they can order to complete their entire setup. Uh, if I click the question marks next to the items, this is another uh, educational experience where you can find out what exactly this piece of equipment does, and, uh, and you know its name and what it does. Um, we also uh, are prompting the user to enter a, a specific size of batch they want to make. Those big kits I showed you before are typically five gallon batches, which is far more than most home brewers need. Getting it down to a one gallon uh, kit to get them started brings the price down to something like $15 to $20 instead of that $100 to $400 setup that we initially started. So it's a much lower uh, financial barrier to entry. And a one gallon kit is perfectly good to upgrade into a five gallon kit or something. So, they've got their equipment, they've got their knowledge, now the fun begins. What we've kind of created here is a marketplace uh, for user-generated recipes that uh, allow the user to find these recipes by style, type, uh, user rating. They can join a recipe of the month type of club and have the uh, uh, recipe sent to their house with the ingredients, connect with uh, friends and other brewers, and then store their own recipes. But when they find a brewer they like, like this feature brew at the top, find out uh, more about it. the alcohol content involved, the more deeper statistics like the original gravity and the bitterness units are along the side there. One, one minute left. Okay. Um, and then they can start brewing it by, uh, by clicking brew it. And they get this uh, tablet interface that lets them swipe to go through the process, mash, boil, ferment, and uh, use the timer on the side there to like up and down to adjust the timer for different steps in the process. So revenue. Uh, obviously, 
they're able, the people are able to buy these recipes on site, so obviously our main revenue is selling this equipment and ingredients. For the product rollout, we have managed a strategic partnership with the home brewing company or home brewing supply company who fulfill these orders, do the shipping for us, and keep our cost down to just things like payroll and uh, application posting on our end. Uh, as far as the market goes, uh, this tool is not only good for the one million existing home brewers, but we really hope to get into just people that like craft beer in general. And uh, it's a huge market, it's a growing market, even though the entire beer market is growing down craft brew, has gone up 15% the last few years. So that is Let's Brew. Uh, we're pretty excited about it, and we think it's a, it's a good way for people to just get into the process themselves. Um, thanks for coming out, everybody. My name is Patrick Stevens. Um, my team will be introduced to you here in a minute. Uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, Shakebox, uh, our company purpose, before we get into everything, is conveniently helping you who work out work better. Having your workouts work better. Here's the team. i got to give a plug to these guys because these guys are awesome. Austin Gregory. Something really silly, and you guys want money and look at it. So, thank you guys. Now, before we get into anything, I'm going to tell you a quick story about why this idea even came up, came into play. I was extremely frustrated. Um, I literally remember going to the gym just the week before the startup thing happened, and I had a great workout. I had a great workout. I worked out for about two hours. Um, I was really sore, but as I was leaving the gym and I was getting in my car, I realized I didn't really bring my protein shake. I didn't bring the supplementation that I needed to use right after my workout for the optimum result. And I already know this, and many people do, but the optimum time to take it is right after a workout. Now, I had to drive home. I had, to, I had my supplements all at my house, so I had to put it together. It, take, it took me a long time to put together. Then I got relaxing, and then I was like realizing I have to wash this because it gets really reeky if you don't like clean it up right away. So long story short, I didn't get the supplementation I needed. Uh, go ahead, Shrin. Uh, um, I didn't get the, well, number one, I forgot it. Number two, it was a long process. It was hard. It was a difficult process. Um, it was unproductive because I spent 10, 15 minutes putting it together, washing it, putting it together, putting it away, and I was kind of lazy. So. That's kind of my frustration, and so <clears throat> that whole time it took to go through that whole process, I thought, go ahead, Drew. Uh, I thought about what could be a cool solution walking out of the gym. <laughs> I thought about a red box sitting at the gym. But instead of a red box, it was a customized shake machine that would allow me to pick the exact supplements I want, the amount of protein I want, the flavors I want, and I had it created fresh right there. I didn't have an employee have to do it. It was just there because I work out at 9.30 at night. There's no person there at 24-hour fitness, and there's a lot of these 24-hour place gyms that don't have a, a you know, personal person to be there. So, pure awesomeness. <laughs> That's my uh, tagline. I love it. So, anyway, go ahead. Um, next. Um, now this is super important. Um, you guys can hold your applause until after the demo because it's that <laughs> impressive. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Touch screen. This is the, imagine a red box. Imagine touching the screen very simply. What do I need to do next? What are flavor do I want? So that's your picture. Okay. Uh, imagine a passport where you just. It's very simple. Most people understand this. You don't have to go into a lot of explanation to how it goes. So keep rolling through the process. Very simple to use. Very easy. We're, Looking to make it uh, beautiful and simple to use. Go ahead. Basically, they get to the point where they pay, they swipe their card, next. Alright, okay, we got a drink. Thank you very much. Have a good day, next. Okay, so that's how money is made, that's how product is transitioned. Uh, people get to throw away their cup as opposed to having dirty dishes. Uh, obviously, we'll tagline it recyclable and made for green, so everybody's happy. Um, why will this work right now? I already kind of mentioned there's tons of kiosks out there. We actually had some inspiration from a similar company, uh, Coca Cola. They have something very similar in the marketplace, but it's specifically for Coke products. You basically use a touch screen, one spout, it gives you the exact same the customization work that you want. So we just took the same concept and put it in a gym. So the competition, uh, there's a company named Bio, a company called Biosauce, a guy named Tim Bolgan. Now he did a huge favor to us and our investors. 
Uh, he already did all the market research for us. So go ahead, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Go ahead, next. <laughs> we give a big thanks to him because for investors, for anybody out there, he lives in the UK. This, thing, this product is already validated. He's in a numerous uh, gyms, which is our, where our phase one target uh, is going. We have a three-phase uh, process. Phase one is simple. We're targeting gyms. Uh, we're basically looking to get this word out through direct sales and general marketing. Uh, basically, right now, what we need in phase one is we need investors. We need to find the right manufacturers to make this product, to patent it, and as well as uh, uh, supplement uh, for the wholesalers. Phase two expansion to all the other places like professional sports teams, corporations, college facilities. We're going to add features and functionalities to phase two so we can add markups. Phase three is world expansion, and really, it's just because there's over 120 million. 120 million gym memberships worldwide. So those are all people that are working out that need their workouts to work better. And that isn't, you know, 120 million, that's a, a huge base that we can go after. All right, that's, that's time. Thank so, you. Thank you. So I got this is the campus, and uh, we're going to turn over there, so I got a thing. But uh, welcome to the United States. Great. Um, thank you. <laughs> Imagine getting picked up by a total stranger at the airport, driven across the city you've never stepped in before, and getting dropped off the doorstep you've never seen before. Sadly, this is Yokiko's own personal experience when she arrived here at Omaha. Unfortunately, this experience is shared by over 720,000 international students last year alone when they first arrived here in the United States. Good. Would you help them? Hi, my name is Ikiko, and I've been here for almost three years now, and I did not get any help when I first got here. I wish that somebody could help me, somebody that is from local. So my idea was to have international student to connect to local students. So that's where the local student comes in as an ambassador. Local, local college student would be much to incoming international student to prepare them for their first few days in their new home. Local student will be also navigate new students to place for of interest such as restaurants, stores, and coffee shops. Como Unity is the connector of the international students to local students. And it also provides resources that include advice for good food, entertainment, tips on how to get around the city, suggestions for where to shop, for clothes, groceries, and other essential will be also available. Online survey and my personal experience identified opening a bank account using an ATM, getting a driver's license, and international student housing as the most important things to know when first coming to the US. And this is our main feature. Yeah, the most focus of our website is the ambassador suit. So I'm just going to basically explain a couple of the uh, core concepts for website. Um, Speak up. <laughs> Talk louder. Sorry. Never done this before. Okay. Um, uh, all right. So uh, basically what we have here is uh, um, this is, uh, this is a, a shot of the ambassadors, uh, an ambassador program. So what these people will do is uh, they have a set of uh, skills um, that, that they'll know they can help with or a set of uh, ideas, basically. Uh, maybe they'll be volunteer and be good at like doing driving someone around the city or something like that, and helping an international student with that. Um, they'll be based in their home country, so this could be in multiple countries, but essentially we're talking about the United States initially, so they'll of course know English. Um, and then whoever this ambassador is, whether it's uh, Brian or a number of others, They'll have, the, uh, they'll have different uh, languages that they'll speak. So it could be Spanish, it could be Japanese, it could be whatever. Um, 
a student would have the option to choose which ambassador they essentially wanted to go with. Um, the UI, of course, it's not looking fantastic right here, but the only change we do have a design. Unfortunately, it just wasn't able to get fully implemented. Um, okay, so some of the other things that we've got are uh, one minute remaining. Yeah. Uh, giving uh, students a local resource uh, to chance to help others. Unfortunately, that's not here either. But essentially, what this whole thing is is that uh, we'll have a, a bar at the top of the screen, essentially, with goals for each person to obtain. So that's either giving a driver's license or finding new housing or what, or what have you. Okay. Um, and then each time they complete one of those tasks, we get an achievement kind of like a reward saying, congratulations, you just did that. And then once that happens, you will get um, options to help other people who have not completed those tasks. And those people will be recommended to you based on who you are, your language, and those types of things. Um, uh, I guess we have, I mean, there's a few other things here, but uh, you have to wait for the question. You're out of time. Thanks. Simplify is the simplest, most non-intimidating way to set up wireless networks for businesses and then extend them and manage them compared to anybody in the market right now. Now, how many of you had Wi-Fi issues over this weekend? Yeah. Quite a few of you, right? And look at this. It's, what's that so many guest networks? Seriously. And then, if you hop onto a network, you walk 20 feet away, you're thrown off of it, and then you have to jump onto another one. And if you didn't know, all of these are on separate domains, so all the radio signals are actually competing against each other and giving you a poorer Wi-Fi uh, speed and experience. Now, the state of the art solution right now is either you start setting it up and you see something like this, and you know, the multitude of technical options you get, and you know, I'm sure you go, WP and security? Oh my god, I want that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, oh, WAP? Ah, for losers. <laughs> you don't do that. And when you want to extend your network, and you want to recable all of that stuff in the score code, you don't know which one's for Ethernet, which one's for your local area network. And when you manage, you, want to, you see this. So, what's the second state of the art solution? Hire networking consultants. We talked to cable guys and we saw this. This is how much it would at least cost to cable this place without cost of equipment. So, extends this problem everywhere. Motels, coffee houses, um, apartment complexes. We asked uh, people how difficult Wi-Fi setup was for them. Over 80% agreed with that statement. And this was the most uh, eye-opening statement for us. The frustration of getting everything to talk to each other. So that's the problem you're trying to solve. Setting up Wi-Fi, extending it, and then managing it. And boy, we need a simple way. And we believe Simplify can deliver on that promise. If you start with the router, right now it's um, you know, this dark, dingy thingy with four ports, and you don't know what you want to do, and it seems like an object of the dark arts to me. Um, we wanted to recreate the router experience so that you don't feel that intimidated by it. So we came up with this, and thank you. So we have that, and just, just look at this, just beautiful. No more of the multiple ports, just one single port, and you know what you need to do. So let's come back to um, this building and you know, how a business owner could set up Wi-Fi here. Come to our site, tell us some very simple information about the space and how many people are going to be in it, and bam, it tells you how many routers you need. And also, you can fill in your username and password for your router right here. It ships in to your place, pre-configured, and all you need to do is start putting them up. And the Wi-Fi network is intelligent. It starts recognizing, oh, my sister's siblings, you are right here. And then you connect your prime water cable to your main, whichever router you want to. All of them have Wi-Fi right there. And boy, if you want to, make, if you want to extend your network, have you made it simple for you. Get, uh, get one of these boxes from your retail store at 11 in the night. You stick them up there. And because your mother router now recognizes there's an unclaimed child router in the vicinity, it pops up. You throw in your four digit pin. Why? So that your neighbor doesn't claim it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and you have Wi Fi. 
And if you want to manage your network, if you want to see who's leaking off your uh, uh, network, who's watching videos that they're not supposed to, like my room. Um, <laughs> simple, visual, and beautiful way of telling you all that data. And again, needless to say, it will work on all devices. So, setting up, extending it, managing it. We think we have a solution for that. Now, if you're wondering um, why are we doing this, Small, medium businesses, uh, we feel we have the biggest value proposition for them. For the amount of money we can save them, for the little amount of money they have to spend to get this. They spend $136 billion a year for IT. A third of them don't have any Wi-Fi networks right now. So we have incredible potential to grow in this um, market. And if you're wondering, for all the money we can save you, for all the simplicity and value we will give, it, uh, we will give to your business, so you can share that with your customers, we have aggressively price pointed at just 199 bucks. Um, if you're wondering how we can pull this up, we have an incredible team of uh, PhD students, um, develop, uh, developers, business guys. Um, you, I do want to say, um, Da Vinci said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And our team believed that at its core, and that is why we are simplified. Thanks.